folks who are watching, we have we have photos today. Some of the photos are intense. There's not going to be anything violent or sexual or um, really bloody, but these are real skin conditions. So if some of you are squeamish, consider this your, your warning. But she'll explain what's going on here. And I think one of the more important things that perhaps you can walk away with is these are the types of skin conditions that, you know, we do see, we do take care of. Now, I always try to look for the empathy bone, especially with people who are dealing with this. If you can, you know, get beyond the squeamishness and find the empathy here to feel for these folks and they're doing well, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Funky acne, Funky acne. and weird, wild things that we're seeing in the skin. So maybe give us a bit of an intro as to what types of things are you seeing and why do you think you're seeing so much more now? Right. Um, we're seeing, great, by the way. thank you, uh, trying my best, um, during the COVID times, you know, starting from last year until now, there has been a change in skin lesions. At first people were beginning to say, do you have skin lesions during, by, uh, when you have COVID? And of course, slowly, slowly starting with Italy and then later on many other countries, uh, also, uh, published their, uh, findings, when a person has COVID, there are in fact skin lesions that appear together with it, okay? Following that, there were new things that were discovered in that new, they, we were discovering certain skin lesions that seemed to appear even before, so preceding the COVID itself, which is common with skin diseases. You know, give you an example, psoriasis for instance, it appears first on the skin, it's very obvious there. But the truth is that it is an inflammatory disease. And what we are seeing with psoriasis initially is the inflammation of the skin, but there is also inflammation within the body and that becomes more manifest later on as diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, even cerebrovascular diseases and all that. So it is with COVID. Certain lesions then began to appear that we said, these seem to be correlated with the precede or precede the appearance of COVID. Then later on, we began to see weird, funky uh, <laughs> kinds of lesions, mostly related to infection. You know, I began to see people with acne, like they really look like acne, but all of a sudden they blossom. They became big and wild and more yeah, inflamed. When she says blossom, it's not what you and I think of as blossoming. <laughs> it is, it's intense. <laughs> right. And so with that, I always do cultures of anything that looks like there's pus or a, an ooze or something. And we be, I began to realize that there were organisms we normally think of as normal in the skin. In a, uh, for instance, this thing that used to be called pterosporum, now called malasesia. The malasesia, from which I think is a prettier name, mm -hmm. the malasesia organism is a normal inhabitant. It's actually a good guy in that it's supposed to break down the fatty acids. You know, you eat fatty acids, you eat lipids, you eat oils, you eat, you know, whatever, uh, skin <laughs> of pigs and whatever because I've been Skin eating chicharron. Pigs. Some of you might be vegan and, and I apologize. Or <laughs> olive oil, there you go, that's oil. You take it internally and eventually the fatty acids from that oil gets to circulate into your skin. And then they are taken up by the, your oil gland and it becomes sebum. And your organisms there that's in place, the pterosporum or now called malassezia, break down those fatty acids so that it become uh, those oils to become fatty acids and to give therefore acidity to the skin because an acid skin is more anti-microbial. Okay. Okay. Now I'm getting to see people like lesions first in the face, the neck where it sweats a lot also. And then lo and behold, in those who start exercising, they're getting so many more sweat acne. So that's one. Another one is I had a patient who came in with. Okay, so we're seeing things because of. Because we the believe. Conditions of COVID. Yes. Either, we're not talking about COVID 
symptoms of the skin that are related to COVID, the disease itself. We're talking about things that we are doing, mm -hmm. like wearing a mask, hyper disinfecting, um, like sweating under the mask, um, that then upset the microbiome balance, microbiota balance of our skin. Right. And so healthy bugs are kind of going bonkers, mm -hmm. right? And historically, or at least in the beginning part of COVID, it really was just mask me that we were looking at. Right. But what you're saying is we're actually seeing a bunch of different things. Right. Right? The mask is an irritation. Oh, and by the way, hi, Sally, and hi, Tan. <laughs> okay. So the mask is an irritation from chemicals that are in the mask that then irritate the skin. And the secondary to that, the skin's pores become clogged. Mm -hmm. And as they get plugged, they develop the beginning of an acne. And this is the problem now, is that we're getting to see these new organisms populate those clogged follicles to make weird looking acne type okay. of spots. Folks who are watching, we have, we have photos today. I, I meant to do this in the beginning, but since we started so late because of technical issues, I'm gonna do it now. Some of the photos are intense. There's not going to be anything violent or sexual or um, really bloody, but these are real skin conditions. So if some of you are squeamish, consider this your, your warning ahead of time. Um, but she'll explain what's going on here. And I think one of the more important things that perhaps you can walk away with is these are the types of skin conditions that you know we do see, we do take care of. And I mean, you know, I always try to look for the empathy bone, especially with people who are dealing with this, because there's um, a link no, between depression, anxiety, and skin problems, like oh, yes. some of these severe things that we're seeing, and certainly psoriasis. So if you can, you know, get beyond the squeamishness and find the empathy here to feel for these folks, and they're doing well, we'd appreciate it. Okay. I'd like to make a disclaimer before the pictures come out in that these are my patients, and I thank you very much if you're watching and listening to this. I really appreciate that you allowed me to bring out these pictures, last being last night, just last night, <laughs> the patient shows me pictures of her uh, grand, uh, of her daughter, of, his, of her son. And uh, she happens to be a re relative actually, you know, from one branch of my family tree. So it was quite nice. Uh, she said immediately yes, and sent me the pictures. So those, those are, so thank you very much. And for the others, with pictures I've shared with others and who realize or I've told them the reason I'm sharing this is because it's it's a lesson, you know, by sharing this with others, they become aware about it and also are able to take care of other people who are having similar problems presenting to them rather than just giving another antibiotic or just another steroid cream or just any other thing, but really addressing the problem. This, and lastly, right. Uh, I made sure that they are not identifiable. So mm -hmm. none of that identifiable. And thank you so much for allowing me to do this, folks. Okay. So we will go to screen sharing. Please let me know in the comments, folks, if you can see. Yes. Okay. This is a very chronic recurrent uh, uh, um, infection. Um, it really looks like acne. It's what we call perioral acne. It's mm -hmm. around there. But if you look closely, you will realize also that in addition to the acne, there's dryness and peeling of the lip, uh, right. lip skin. Are you all seeing my cursor when I go over that? So you can see, no, it's not just the acne lesions around the mouth, but this is what we say when we say perioral acne, right? Yes. And you can see the chronicity of it in the fact that there is, you can see her normal fair skin is the one in the neck. That's her normal color of her skin. But you can see that if you go up, around the mouth, underneath, the, underneath, especially the left angle of the, of, the li of the lips, you can see more darkening that comes all the way to the middle of that, uh, that area. So this is a very chronic, this has become a chronic recurring problem. So like for how many years? Oh, since 2012, 13, like oh, that. Wow. It would, every couple of years it would recur, every couple of years it would recur, and this one would be the latest that started, I guess in 2000, early this year or even last year. Okay. So we'll just look for and the normally the, what would happen is she would see a doctor yes. who would then give an antibiotic because these were believed to be normal mm -hmm. bacterial acne. Correct? That's right. Okay. Or not even bacterial because acne really is non, non microbial. Mm -hmm. There are no organisms really in it that are pathogenic. And so normally we will give in 
uh, anti-inflammatory injections with steroids are even common, for instance, or an antibiotic that has also uh, immune uh, mediating capabilities, like doxycycline, if anybody has ever given, given you that. So these are the usual kinds of things. And of course, the sulfur and the salicylic and whatever. But eventually what I did was I cultured it. Normally we don't culture. Okay, guys, this is important. If you have a chronic condition that's sort of like this, it's been, remember this has been going since 2012. Off and on. Off and on, and it's been treated multiple ways. One thing to maybe ask your doctor is, can you culture it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you missed that, but getting a culture is fundamental. So go ahead. So we did a bacterial culture. I think not a fungal. Sometimes I do a fungal as well. Next slide. Okay. And then you can see what happens after. No, no, not that one. Still around the mouth area. Here. There, that one. And now you can see an improvement already uh, of uh, her. She has also one that's very clear already. Here? The one above it. No, that's not her. Okay, I'm sorry, this is the only one. She has a very clear, she then went onto a much clearer skin after that, we were able to clear it. But you can see there was an area right at the middle of the chin there this that was part. rather persistent yeah. and actually broke up and then became a rather uh, uh, severe looking funky acne. This so, is the one that had necrosis before. That was necrotic okay. before. So just so, I, I mean, folks, I don't know if you understand, no? this, this picture on the left, was on and off chronic for since 2012 or so and it got so bad that if you look here on the photo on the right this area right here on the bottom it's of the becoming chin inflamed became so inflamed so you can see actually on the right there's already improvement in some mm -hmm. but this area is still incredibly inflamed to the point that and we don't necessarily see it here but this area became necrotic and what that means is it looks black Mm -hmm. right like black dead tissue already mm -hmm. and that's when she started to really freak, freak out and she said we need to get a culture of that puppy that's so right. how what then how did you treat her we did a culture we look for the organism as if for the uh, what we call a sensitivity test mm -hmm. which gives you different kinds of antibiotics that can be given mm -hmm. and that's what we gave her and she improved quite a bit i'm really sorry the she has her clear picture is not included, mm -hmm. but she did clear up quite a bit. And uh, there. Okay. I, what I want to know is, did the lip, did her lips improve as well? Yes, they did as well. So do you think there was involvement of the micro with the lips? Yes, there could have been a contact dermatitis here. Um, we actually thought of uh, a, con a patch test. I can't remember this case very well, but we did a patch test, I think, to try to find out what, what allergies she must have had in that area. Because in this area, you would think of lipstick, of course. Mm -hmm. But if you notice here, irritation is more on the upper lip. It's darker, peeling, and all that. They both are, but... And so we think about the mask. The mask, uh, normally the upper lip is the one wall because we have a jutting upper lip more than the, than the lower lip. The lower lip, as you can see in the side view of the that's lady, true. it juts out, uh, juts, juts out. And so that's the one that really gets in touch more as you talk and, you know, right. with the mask. So, so we, we yeah. see those reactions first. Okay. So the point is, folks, I think some of the big takeaways for me here are if you have a condition that is this chronic, this inflamed for so long, this is years and years and years, and it keeps coming back. Don't just have acne, you, you know, know surgery, surgery. And but... don't just take typical topical mm -hmm. uh, medications. Um, if you've tried sort of typical anti-acne internally taken medication and still are not seeing an improvement, then definitely go see your doctor. I would add, if you're seeing other involvement like the lips as well, Definitely, definitely see your doctor because there might need to be a culture to really try to target what kind of drug you need to be taking mm -hmm. because clearly a bug is involved here, correct? Now, um, why do you think that, again, you're seeing more of this? Do you think this is related to the whole COVID thing of hyper I think so. Infection? Right. Okay. I believe so. Okay. All right. So the, the microbiota is another subject. You know, what the two things that you'll be hearing of more and more during COVID are barrier repair, the barrier, because the barrier is so compromised nowadays because of all of these chemicals that we're hyper using in our environment. 
uh, the, 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 you know, the sprays that are being, uh, if you're in a village, they're always having the sprays. And then in your own home with whatever insecticides and fresheners and uh, disinfectants and all of that, plus of course your own personal disinfectants for your hands that you touch your faces with. So we're, we're really changing the microbiota of the skin. And in addition to that, the diet, you know, particularly nowadays, the, the food that we're eating is usually, we're staying for 12 bloody hours indoor, inside and working here. Mm -hmm. So it's so, I see a lot, uh, people have gained weight. But, <laughs> in but other that's going to change as things start opening up. But then as things start opening up, you're now going to be dealing with air conditioned rooms and commuting and right. pollution and stuff like that. Right. What I did want to, again, overemphasize, and I'm sure Liz Franco, who is a, you know, genius sort of, um, hyper knowledgeable woman in regulatory and cosmetics and drugs and things like this will agree with me when I say hi, hi, Mom Liz. Um, it's never, especially for something this chronic, folks, and this intense, it's never one thing, right? There is no magic cream that you can apply that's going to address this. If it's been this chronic, this inflamed, you really do need to see a doctor and probably get that cultured. Uh, and hi as well to Mia. Okay. This lady, by the way, just so you know, is also seeing a functional doctor. And uh, I kind of work with the doctor as well. We talk about what other factors, because these are multifactorial, includes the diet, the gut, the microbiota of the gut and all mm -hmm. that. I was just talking about the skin microbiota, which becomes very much affected, but the gut as well, because of the kinds of food. Yeah. I, be I believe she's a vegetarian. And so it may have something to do actually with also exposure to the leaves and to the chemicals that yeah, people maybe. are using yeah. on leaves. And even yeah. though it's organic, you know, that there are no chemicals. The leaves still have some chemicals of their own that can be an irritant on the skin, much like the flowers that are out there and blooming and yeah. giving us mangoes. There are very strong irritants and allergens as well. So I uh, also want to remind you guys who are watching, thank you for your patience and coming back to watch us, even though it took us 20 minutes to get on. If you have any questions, please do write them in the comments. But crucially, if you are embarrassed for whatever reason, please PM um bmb hypoallergenics on, on facebook because there's a team standing by and they will make sure i get your questions okay did you want to go to the next case let me uh, select it i'd love to go to the baby is the baby there i think so yeah is that's the, the baby? baby okay came back from the beach and rashes can you see the rashes on the june 18 picture yeah. can you guys yeah. see it's like a darkening mottled you might have to zoom in red <laughs> itchy poor kid is scratching away Add them, okay? There. Here, oh, right, no, right. Uh -huh. I'm yeah. catching it. Okay. Little baby, strong family history of allergies, mm -hmm. and so therefore, and this is recurrent things. You know, whether they're at the beach or they're here or in some beach, but not in another beach. You know, so they said, well, one of the things we have to do the here is to just improve the barrier of the skin so that it's able to protect itself from whatever beach he's going to go because he's a child. He's going to run around. Um, hopefully not allowed to roll around in the sand, but still, you know, touching it and all that. So what I did was just give some products that were protective and barrier repairing, very simple, no perfume, a lot of virgin, virgin coconut, coconut oil, oil in it, of course, to help repair the barrier. And the mother texted me last night and said, oh my God, she said, Doctora VMV, Tita V, she doesn't quite know how to call me because I am a relative of hers. She said, I love it. My, I, my son has never been this clear before. Is this the same? So this is the same. And the others are the yeah, same no, picture. There, the you rash. can see some. There, you can see the rashes a little bit, little bit better. They're not so severe. This is, after all, a baby. But that's very severe already for a baby and for the mother. I mean, you can imagine that kind of a rash appearing, right? Yeah. Now, what are they? They can be what we call atopic dermatitis, the inherited form of allergy due to uh, mainly a lack of a certain protein in the skin that compromises the barrier. So that's called filagrin. And uh, because ah, of that, there yes. is... Do you there... guys remember we did a live stream on the barrier, yes. caring for the barrier. And we said, if, if you have atopic dermatitis, look for a barrier cream that has filagrin. Filagrin. Yeah. Right. Ah, cera cer cer ceramides. Ceramides. Yeah, ceramides, uh, sorry. Right. Yes. Because filagrin is used in the production of ceramide. There you go. Okay. Okay, so in this case, you know, there were so many products they were using, they were coming from whatever country and whatever. So I said, 
why don't we do this? His skin looks like this using those. Can you just put that in the refrigerator maybe or give it to somebody else for, to use? And, and for him, let's go to simple, simple basics. That way I can identify what will be good for us. So all I did was give really a very simple, simple regimen. The, the coconut oil that I really like to use because it's so simple, cold pressed and, and all that. Why did you think this was um, particularly interesting or weird? This was uh, because, not particularly weird, but mm -hmm. something that's common enough that people tend to neglect or will just use something that's mm -hmm. immediately. And then of course, when they do that, that skin may actually be reacting to the product. And so it continues okay. and becomes so, yeah. a problem. What I also know, thanks. But, and my, yeah, my message ahead, really here is attend to them as they come. Don't wait for it to become more severe. Attend immediately. Take, uh, take notice of it and start the treatment. Because and it, then, yeah, okay. So what I think tends to happen sometimes, and I've done this with my kids, is when something like this shows up, you just go, eh, it might just be the heat. Yeah, I get that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, it might actually. But so maybe after a little cool compress, if it still has not dissipated, then yeah, maybe pay some real attention already. Get, um, you know, an anti-inflammatory, not a steroid necessarily, especially for children, you don't, always want to reach for the steroid, but virgin coconut oil can help. Let me show you a pattern of the skin that proves to me or makes me think that this is a reaction to maybe the laundry soap that was used in sheets or towels in the resort they went to. You will notice that his shoulders are okay. Uh, here. The outer upper arm. Okay, guys, this is this is what my mother does best. So pay attention. This yeah. is really cool. So she'll really map out the skin. Right. Take a good look at that up to the neck, down to the shoulder and the upper arm, even the inner arms are perfectly good. Those are the ones that are affected by clothing, what you wear, because they're the ones ah, that move, you know, what and all that. Whereas this here. is more stable. This is what you lie down on. Right. This is what a, maybe it's a chair that the kid, that the child will be sitting on, something more stable. That's why, and let, look at the pattern, hmm. right? So you have to look at the pattern and, and see, okay, what is he sitting on more? Or Do you whatever? guys see that? Do you see what, what we mean? If you look up here in the shoulders, mm -hmm. even in the arms, even in the outer portions here of the back, it is clear. But if you look here where someone would be lying, it's really quite full here. Right. No, I think that's very interesting. I mentioned that because you talk about sweating and mm -hmm. sweatiness normally will affect the neck, the shoulders, the inner, because uh, those are the more sweaty areas. This will secondarily sweat, but the sweaty areas are really on the outer parts. The outer parts. Okay, yeah. so you guys, that's a nice tip for where you're seeing your reactions. Okay, I think we can go to the next case. Okay. Would you like to show this one? Yeah, this is uh, a severe one. I don't think I want to show this to you because this is really a, disease, a medical condition already. I think we're curious because we're curious. if someone sees this on the chest, they might think it's just regular sweat acne. Right. Whereas it, it might be a good tip to show them. Right. If you see this, go seek medical attention. Right. When you have something like this that is really quite severe already that looks like acne, it could be acne. People will actually treat this as acne for a while you have to see your doctor because there are actually syndromes. And if the doctor then begins to ask, do you have any joint pains? Mm. Do you have any other medical problems? Joint pains in particular will signal to us that this is part of a, uh, another kind of an acne form eruption that signals inflammation inside the body already. And for that, we have certain medications that will give. Fortunately, this young man didn't have any. And so all I needed to do was give an internal medication that is primarily very good for this kind and of an can eruption. Can we discuss what it is? And it's clear. It's a retinoid. You, it's a it's, reaction to a retinoid. Ah, no, the the treatment is no. What is the condition? Are you allowed to say what the skin problem? What the condition is? The There's health. one called SCAPHO, S C A P H O, that is associated with internal diseases. I think this is the one that's associated with joint pain. So I actually brought him to a rheumatologist to also be examined. And I believe it was relatively fairly negative. And so we felt this is probably all, thank goodness, mainly the skin and uh, young man, very tall, lean, growing up, like, you know, so anyway, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, point, he, he the responded. point thing here for me huh, is number one, there, there is acne that can look inflamed, right? 
And I think when people see that, they think they can just apply something topical or, God forbid, squeeze the lesions. Don't or order from lesions. Lasada and anti-acne lotion. Stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Too funny. <laughs> um, so I think her point is don't just sort of self-medicate and go crazy buying topical things. Um, when it's this inflamed, right? We always say if something is incredibly inflamed, it looks like cystic acne or more. It could even look like boils. These lesions look quite different, folks, right? Than say even really bad acne than you see. But because people aren't necessarily trained dermatologists, they don't think beyond acne. So if you see something like this, go see your doctor because number one, it might really require a proper diagnosis, right? It might require prescription medication, but I think a huge takeaway from her share, from sharing this case is many, many skin conditions can be, a, so, can be signs of other health conditions Correct. that Correct. require management, Correct. right? We started the lecture, uh, the, the talk about mm -hmm. the fact that there are lots, the skin is the most amazing uh, organ of the body is the biggest organ of the body and in addition is the biggest mirror of the body for everybody to see what's actually going on inside so that's the inside part and we also talk about how the outside world also affects us i'm going to double down on this okay because some of let's say in rheumatology and things like this some of those symptoms might actually come later Right. right either joint pains or other Correct. things so you wouldn't even go see a rheumatologist but this might, the skin might already be manifesting. It triggered me to refer to it. Exactly. So don't take these things lightly, folks. Okay. So this is another one. The on same the one. It's the same. Okay. So this person actually had this problem on the front and the back. And again, you know, if you see this, you might be going, well, it's just really bad sweat acne, right? Um, and many times, for example, you know, we'll get people on social media asking, hey, what do I do about bumps? Or what do I do about keratosis pilaris? Or what do I do about sweat acne? What do I do about this or that? One of the first things we always say is make sure it is diagnosed by a dermatologist. Right. Because even dermatologists can either make mistakes with a diagnosis or can disagree among themselves about what a diagnosis is. So imagine us lay people who are not dermatologists how mistaken we can be just from looking at the internet and deciding, oh, this is keratosis pilaris or, oh, this is whatever. Um, and it may not be. You mentioned a word there, sweat acne. Mm -hmm. Sweat acne can actually look like this, not as uh, severe or not big, you know, but sweat acne can spread out yeah. all over the back just like this and more. Right. This little girl used to have that when she was young because she was always yeah. playing tennis in midday, midday sun. So she had acne that looked like this all over the back. And this people who are now running and out in the sun and sweating and doing exercises every day, I get to see sweat acne that Maybe also looks like this. this is why I have so much empathy because it was really, I, I really suffered for this. I used to lie about who my mother was because <laughs> they couldn't believe why my skin was like that. So again, you know, like she said, sweat acne can look like this somewhat. So it, it can, you can be misdiagnosing. Yeah. And then, especially in this particular case, not only was it not sweat acne, but it might actually be linked to a disease that needs a rheumatologist's care. Okay. Right. And you need that dermatologist again because sweat acne is not acne. In other words, acne is a disease of the oil gland, the sebaceous gland, mm -hmm. and the, the pore that it's associated with. That is acne. And that's the one that you get in the face and you get all those zits and all of that. Okay, speaking of that, Nina is asking, um, they say, they say, I guess it's a it's common knowledge that common knowledge that acne prone skin is hereditary is this true and if yes that does that mean we can never have clear skin if acne is hereditary in the family? this is so true there is a large uh, people who, who tend to have what you call acne vulgaris the cystic type and all that yes this is true but not just in another daughter but also in several other patients i have shown that if I know that there is a hereditary aspect to an acne in a person, I will give the medication that really uh, is uh, directs, directs its action directly on that sebaceous gland as the child gets into her teens, like 11 or 12 and start already the treatment I gave this young man. And that acne never develops. 
you know. So, so I, my true. favorite story is again, I won't be naming names, Later, but it's late. Okay. It's late. So okay. this is a very nice story. Okay, but that's okay. go 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 go. Okay, this is a family stay. of models, women as well as men, and so I was treating the acne to just make the skin look gorgeous. They were the older ones. So comes the eleven-year-old who was beginning to get acne as well. So I turned to the mother and I said, "How about?" I gave your other children, because they were much older, about five years or six years, this medication when they already had a flaring of the acne lesions on the face, the chest, the back. How about we give it to them? And I said, by doing that, we're arresting the process right at the very start. And you know what? He gave it for the four months or six months that was requisite for it, and the child became quite a nice model and skin never developed the acne. So it so can be the takeaway aborted. is yes, it can be hereditary, but it can also, if caught early enough and treated properly, not manifest. I would add there all the stuff we say, all the stuff we say about exposomes. If you're very good about not using irritants, allergens, if you're right. very good about not doing inflammatory Correct. things like eating bad food, not sleeping, Correct. being very stressful, or not managing that stress then yeah, you can actually help prevent it. We have a question from Tammy. Can BCO with mono Lauren be used as a soother after shaving the bikini area to prevent bumps, irritations from razor, et cetera? Yes. Absolutely. Very, because Very of, nice anti -inflammatory. for several reasons. One is anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Two, because it is antimicrobial. Should any organisms try to get into the open, right. open areas? And, or cut, right. minor cuts in the skin. Right. And three, because it's barrier repair. So whatever, you know. So yeah. yes, absolutely. So the okay. absolute no, answer is yes. This is? This is another patient with forehead acne, sweat acne. Oh, okay. The hair coming down, mm -hmm. you notice? And sweat uh, here. Yes. Here, folks, is right. what she always tells people to look at. Look, the contact of the hair, right? Here. Okay. And over here on the right side, you can see there were scars from the previous acne, mm -hmm. still has a few bumps, but with the hair drawn away from the face. Ah, so look at this. One of the main things done was just to wear a headband mm -hmm. to keep the hair back. I think that's a phenomenal tip, folks. And honestly, that's why one of the reasons why I don't keep bangs is, I mean, my forehead's very high and I probably benefit from bangs, but because I did have acne from hair, then this is what I do. So this is what this dude also did. Yeah. Um, this is what similar. Okay. So oh, this is just that's regular acne though. Okay. So that's regular acne, and already allowing it to become cystic. This is a good example. Mm -hmm. That one, the first, the picture just before this. Ah, okay. That if we are to treat this early on, yeah, then you can prevent the 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 scars from appearing. Okay. But treat early. early. Go to your dermatologist early. Okay. Work with them. I Tell think them we about have time this. For one last slide, and then we, you know, can stop the screen share and and make sure we get all. Yeah, you that's know, the same thing. This is very similar. But you know, there's something very interesting here. That's been cleared already. That was a 2018. Mm -hmm. If you notice, the sides of the face are already okay. You have a central change here. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to see. And you will notice that there's a redness just around the ala here, ah, yes. redness and the thickening. Look at the difference in the nose between that and this. But it's a this is now angle. becoming becoming rhinophyma. It's becoming ah, a bit thick, and there's yeah. a rosacea trait that's beginning because rosacea trait starts to come out when you go into your late twenties and then thirties. Rosacea is also an inherited usually inherited disease, when you look around, these are usually in mestizos, what you call mestizos in the country, where Mixed there's race, either uh, Chinese or Spanish or whatever other kind of uh, white skin mixed in with the Asian skin. These are the people who tend to develop uh, rosacea uh, faster. And so he's older, three years later, the acne is gone, the scars are not so bad, but now through in the central face together with the nose chains, the dilated vessels, the redness there, the discolorations here and all that, that's part of early, early rosacea that you should also be aware of for those of you who have, seem to have changed and also dryness of the skin yeah. as you become more rosacea, the, the skin no longer becomes oily. It becomes, tends to become a little bit more dry. This is actually very interesting because someone starts out where the main concern is really uh, cystic acne, yes. right? Very that's regular skin. cystic acne. Right. But this is the main concern. And then look how it develops. The acne actually goes away. 
the skin has now become drier and she's seeing now uh, rosacea starting. So mm -hmm. our skins do change. On that note, I'm gonna stop the screen share and we'll get to answering some of the questions. Mm -hmm. Judy's asking, I have uh, skin problems on my hands, very, very itchy with tiny bumps. Okay. On the hands, you have to tell me, is it on the top part or is it on the bottom part? Is it on the entire palm or the entire back, or is it just in certain fingers? And if it's on the fingers, on what part of the fingers does it occur? Because that will... Then that will help us. Because sometimes, yeah. for instance, if it's just in these three fingers, it's something that you're holding. If it's in certain areas of the hands, like this and that, and you have a leather or a rubber or a dark cover for your telephone, it could, it be, could be you're allergic to the thing that, so it has to be a distribution that you have to take a look at and then you, you can, uh, it becomes easier to identify it. So there, that the first thing is to find out where it is mostly. Yeah. As you saw in the slide shares, she really looks at where are the problems occurring and that really helps um, fine tune what the possible cause could be. Uh, Gian is asking, I get acne inside my nose sometimes and it is painful. Is that normal? What can I apply on it? I get that. So I would say it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not normal. <laughs> It can be changed in the microbes there. Maybe you're inhaling antiseptics. Maybe you're inhaling steroids. Like if you have, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, oh, asthma inhalers. Asthma inhalers or, you or know. Rhinitis. Rhinitis inhalers that have steroids in them. So you change kind of the character of the microbes in your nose. And therefore you have actually a mild infection there. Mm -hmm. Treat it with coconut oil. Just apply it every day. If you really need your asthma medication, Use it, but then after you've used it, rinse it a bit and put in coconut oil because of its antimicrobial and biorepair effects. So why I get them is because I have an auto-inflammatory disease, right? So when that starts to flare, um, I, I regularly get them. Very fairly big cysts on the inside like that. And I will put virgin coconut oil. I'll sometimes do a cold compress with virgin coconut oil remember the crucial thing we shared this in another live stream never be very very careful with very large zits uh, uh -huh. in or near the nose particularly i mean very big ones right because this is a straight up to the <laughs> freeway to the, to the, brain. To the brain so you don't want that infected matter breaking uh, and going up don't, here, don't right? try to squeeze so, it <laughs> yeah so really be gentle use a hot what she actually has advised sometimes is to um, an alternate, a warm compress with VCO and then a cool compress with VCO. The cool compress I like because it brings down the inflammation right away, right? But the warm compress is to help get things circulating. So the blood goes in there and rinses out that infection. Um, okay, Zed is asking, is moisturizer really necessary? Depends upon your skin. <laughs> De definitely, I definitely need a moisturizer because I have dry skin generally. People with this very might fine be in pores. Reaction to, uh, there, was, there was something that came out a while ago that went viral that oily skin does not need a moisturizer ever. Mm, okay. Uh, so in, in regards to people with, uh, uh, moist, with oily skin. Well, if you have oily skin, I, you, know, you, you can use a very light moisturizer, but you know. Simply put, here's the thing, right? <laughs> Um, the, a moisturizer has three functions, right? It is a hum, it can be a humectant, right? Which, which is what it uh, helps. It stays on the surface of the skin to prevent the water from inside that's right. part of the barrier to become evaporated. Right. So, so it remains there. Humectant is kind of crucial for barrier care, and your barrier is fundamental. Oily, dry combination, any chemo acne, anything, your, your barrier is so fundamental, the skin's barrier. So even with oily skin, oily skin people can have a compromised barrier. That's right. Just from overwashing, over treating, mm -hmm. uh, from exposure to pollutants. Very good. This Thank is you. Really smart from exposure to allergens <laughs> and irritants. So even, yeah. But the key, of course, is to find a light moisturizer that does not flood pores or does not irritate pores. Correct. So. Uh, lastly, and then I think we can go, 
Nina, for those scars that are deep, is there any way to still address that to make those deep scars? scars Absolutely. Level up Absolutely. There are lots of things that can be doing uh, done for the scars from simply like you can get a filler, you know, the ones that are to, you know, fill up the like that. I dilute them very much. And then this very hyper diluted, I inject a little bit like that. And, you know, voila, after a month or so, when they come back, they look so much better. Do it two or three times. It's perfect. That's one that's relatively non-interventional. Another thing is um, they also inject directly into it with larger amounts. And then there are machines that are used. There are multiple needles that are used. And then there are machines that are, you know, used. Uh, you'll have to go to um, at the art clinic, for instance. My main clinical knowledge is in taking care of difficult cases. So referral patients or patients who are referred by friends, relatives, and other doctors for problematic cases that don't seem to be responding to the usual. You know, but other than me, there are other doctors there who are extremely good in doing. Uh, other kinds energet. of, uh, yeah, and there are, there's an Energet, for instance, which is a, which I like very much because it tightens the skin. I'm 82. That's pretty good for Energet to do, right? I have no. <laughs> and VCO. And, and eating right. And VCO, and sleeping, right. well. and sleeping well. Okay. On that note, folks, I'm going to let her go. And since we started late, I'm not going to keep you very late with all this other stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. You are most welcome. And thank you again for my patients who were very nice to help me, to allow me to share their pictures. Uh, it was, it's good because it's as you can see, people. yeah, it will help other people and particularly in recognizing their need to see their doctor, their dermatologist, sure. because the skin can be a sign for something internal that the doctor can help out with. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you in a few minutes. John. Uh, well, in an hour or so. In an hour. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a full day. Bye. Okay. So, um, folks, again, I am sorry we started so late today because this was, we had major technical issues. But if you have questions, sort of follow-up questions, just put them on the chat. We'll get there. Um, you can also find us, bmbhypoallergenics.com, bmbhypoallergenics.ph. In the Philippines, we're also on Viber for VMB the brand, as well as the clinic. BSRC. We are offering a cute little bundle now. Um, I had put it away because I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but just in case, you're, this is a, a cute little pouch that comes with a re-everything face and body lotion. Oops! Ah! And a small I can help. size I can help. of the oil-free nourisher. Sorry. Not Hi. the big size. I can help. Size. I can okay. help. And then a big brave boo boo bomb. Um, and we have other cool things that are sort of happening. And again, if you would like a teleconsultation with my mother or <laughs> any other doctor we work with, drop us a DM um, and let us know if you are having trouble finding products based on your patch test results, we can customize recommendations yes, for you. Yes, we can. That is it, folks. Thank you. And again, my apologies for how late we were. Yes. We will get better at also, this. Also, yeah. um, please um, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. In YouTube, of course. I don't think you can do that. Sorry. You can do that in uh, Facebook. But anyway, please follow us in Facebook so you never miss out on any live streams. And well, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week ahead. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.